To say that the Powerpuff Girls was a cultural phenomenon back in its heyday would be an understatement. I mean, if you're popular enough to be on the side of a jet plane, you've pretty much made it in life. Now, it's no secret that I've had my fair share of experience with this franchise as a diehard fan of the classic Powerpuff Girls series, and seeing as I've already dedicated years of my life to talking about this franchise on the internet, I figure why not go an extra step further. The Powerpuff Girls saw its fair share of merchandise releases, sponsorship deals for various food products, toys galore, it got its own theatrical movie, and while that's certainly all well and good, those are topics for another time. Today we're going to be looking at another popular branch of licensed merchandise that was commonly seen back in the 1990s and 2000s decades, video games. More specifically, Relish Rampage for the PlayStation 2 and Nintendo GameCube, which is actually the version I'm primarily using for this video, but trust me, it came out on the PS2 first. Ironically, I'm actually starting this series of videos with one of the last Powerpuff Girls video games that was ever released for the classic series, and other than some cameo appearances in other Cartoon Network crossover games, this is the last time the Powerpuff Girls ever appeared on a video game console or handheld until LEGO Dimensions in 2017. There was still a Powerpuff Girls Z game released for the Nintendo DS, as well as Defenders of Townsville on Steam, which was about the Dance Pants special, but those are also games to be covered at a later date. So, Relish Rampage. What's the deal with this one? Well, the game was developed by Viz Entertainment and published by BAM Entertainment in 2002, the latter of which would later go on to absorb the former before they were inevitably sent into dormancy until this very day due to stock market related complications. Better than bankruptcy? You decide. Nah, but in all seriousness, get used to hearing the names Viz and BAM Entertainment because this will certainly not be the last time we cover games made by them. Now believe it or not, despite my attachment to the Powerpuff Girls as a series, I never actually owned a single Powerpuff Girls video game aside from a demo for Mojo Jojo's Clone Zone that was on my copy of Scooby-Doo Case File No. 1, The Glowing Bug Man for PC. You know, I haven't actually played any of those Scooby-Doo PC games in quite a long time, but I tell you what, the inclusion of the demo is probably the reason why I'm so good at math, because I tell you, I played that game for hours and ended up having the highest math grade in my entire second grade class. I don't mean to brag or anything, but eight-year-old me was kind of a genius. But now that I'm realizing I've gone on a tangent about math in a YouTube video review of a Powerpuff Girls video game released in 2002 and 3, I'm gonna get back on track now. Point is, I've never had this game growing up, so I don't have very much nostalgic attachment to it, but I did get the chance to play it a few years back. This is essentially my second time ever playing the game, and if memories of my first playthrough are anything to go by, I do not anticipate having a strong admiration for it. But let's pop this bad boy in and see what's in store. Relish Rampage was initially released on the PlayStation 2 on November 24th, 2002, but then received an updated re-release on the Nintendo GameCube just one year later under the label of Pickled Edition, which is also the primary version I'm playing for this video. I'll get more into what the differences are between the two momentarily, but I guess I should add that Europe got both a GameCube version and a PS2 version at the same time in 2002, so I wonder what the reason was for North America only getting a PS2 version at first. Apparently there was also an Xbox version planned at one point, but that never came to fruition. So as far as the plot of this game goes, it should look pretty familiar to anybody who's seen several of the Powerpuff Girls episodes from the first few seasons. Namely, Impeach Fuzz and Beat Your Greens come to mind, only with minor changes. The game is broken down into three acts, although really the first act has almost nothing to do with the other two. Mojo Jojo has decided to run for mayor against the mayor and is currently up to his old tricks in order to attempt to sway Townsville citizens into voting for him. By enlisting the help of other nefarious evildoers such as Princess Morbux and the Gang Green Gang, Mojo is able to manipulate the city into hypnotized apes that will vote for him in order to win the election. The Powerpuff Girls happen to catch this on live TV and head on down to City Hall to put a stop to Mojo's undemocratic interference. It is here that they decide to help the mayor with his free pickles campaign and put a stop to the villains causing a ruckus by destroying their mind control helmets as well as collecting the ballot boxes located around the city. Numerous side missions and a few boss fights later, the girls have successfully stopped Mojo from winning the election, causing him to scream in a fit of rage at his defeat. 
And as it just so happens, he was wearing his mind control helmet whilst shouting in anger and this transmission just so happens to be intercepted by an alien race of pickle creatures that are currently looking for a new homeworld. Hearing Mojo's transmission, they decide to intervene and change course for Townsville where we later see their alien pickle pods raining down from the sky during the grand opening of the brand new Townsville Pickle Museum and has it become clear yet that this game really wants to put an emphasis on pickles? Gosh, it's almost as in your face about it as the mayor's dream from Nightmare. I mean, I get the dude likes pickles, but this is dialing it up to 11. Anyways, Mitch Mitchelson ends up swallowing one and transforms into the Pickle Queen, so now it's up to the girls to put a stop to the havoc all of these invading pickles are causing around town. After they successfully defeat the queen, the pickles resort to kidnapping and brining the mayor and Professor alive, while the girls don the dynamo suits to team up with Mojo and bring down the pickle leader. After sneaking on board the pickle mothership, the girls defeat defeat a weird tentacle monster thing I guess, save the mayor and professor, and send the pickle aliens packing, thus concluding the plot of Relish Rampage. As I said, if you've seen Beat Your Greens, this is very, very similar to that episode with slight hints of impeach fuzz thrown into Act 1. They even reference the whole vote for mayor for mayor slogan that the mayor had in that episode. But as far as the gameplay goes, uh, yikes. I mean, this isn't the worst video game I've ever played, but the actual experience of playing this leaves a lot to be desired especially because it's a Powerpuff Girls game. Relish Rampage sees you controlling all three of the Powerpuff Girls together at once in a similar vein to something like Sonic Heroes, minus the fact that each team member has different character abilities. No, it doesn't really matter which Powerpuff you pick to lead the trio because they all function the exact same way except for two special moves each that do the exact same thing anyway, so there's really no point. Since there's no impact on the game, I tend to just cycle through each of them at random and don't really have much of a preference for one over the others. Whichever girl is currently in the lead is the primary one you control, with the other two following by her sides. You can also adjust your altitude above the ground by pressing the X and Y buttons, which becomes important when you go to try and pick items off the ground or need to avoid traffic. The girls also have basic punch and kick attacks, which are performed by pressing the A and B buttons, but you can also lock on enemies via Legend of Zelda in order to perform some more specialized attacks. Laser eyes, a pummel attack, starburst, there's a wide selection of moves to choose from, but ultimately they all function the same way. Nine times out of 10, I just choose the basic laser eyes attack because all other special moves require the use of a chemical X vial in order to activate. Some cost two vials and other cost three, and once you use the up, you're back down to one vial again, which means you gotta go collect more. Thankfully though, the first vial always refills, so you still have unlimited use of your laser eyes attack. I'm not really a fan of this mechanic, seeing as you're forced to basically scour the area for these vials just to be able to perform one singular attack before you have to go pick up another vial. I would have much preferred an automatic recharge system be implemented in order to remove the middleman and erase the break in action that's created by this problem. I don't find myself having an issue with this too often, but in certain cases like Mitch's boss fight, it utterly diminishes the intensity and rhythm of the battle because you'll pretty much be leaving every 10 seconds to go get more Chemical X. The only advantage these moves provide is that they do more damage, but really, that's only useful against boss fights or vehicles that actually have a health bar because most enemies can all be defeated with just one punch. I would not really advise wasting your special moves on the basic grunts. Speaking of boss fights, they really aren't all that exciting. I mean, you can literally defeat all of the gangrene gang just by holding left or right on the control stick and spamming your laser eyes over and over again. Princess is more or less just a car chase, not really a boss fight, and Sedusa, the only other villain that shows up in the game, appears in the middle of the second section for a brief period, which is a nice distraction from all the fetch quests during that portion of the game, but she really has no impact on anything that's going on. The game really feels like like it drags during the second act. Still though, I like them for what they are and they do a good job at breaking up the repetitiveness of the main missions. Yes, despite my enjoyment of the boss fights, as pitiful as they are, I can't say the same for the remaining quests in the game. This is the most point A to point B game I think I've ever played. I mean, every single mission is basically just go here, do this thing, go here, do this thing, over and over and over again. It gets extremely repetitive extremely fast and you experience what most of the game has to offer in just the first act alone. In fact, the very first mission is a prime example of this. You fly up to City Hall and the mayor tasks 
tasks you with delivering the ballot boxes to the different polling places located around Townsville. Because that's what I want to do when I play a Powerpuff Girls video game. Screw monster fights, I want to engage in politics. In essence, you just pick up a box, fly it to this place, fly back, repeat. Oh, what's that? That's the first mission? Great. It's not very complicated, nor is it much of a tutorial. I go back and forth on how I feel about tutorials in video games. There are times where I feel it's necessary and others where it is not, but this game pretty much just throws you in and says, have fun. It's not very hard to figure out though, so I wouldn't say this is a huge detriment, but there might be some things that take a while for you to figure out. Another thing I should add is that the game only contains four different mission types that you play numerous times. Collecting and delivering items, defeating all enemies, three escort missions, and boss fights. It's not very extravagant and becomes very mindless very fast. Relish Rampage is not a game that asks the player to think very hard. I turned my brain off after 20 minutes and before I knew it, I had beaten the game because yeah, believe it or not, this is remarkably short, especially for a console game. I knocked this out in less than two hours total and that was without knowing what I was doing. I didn't get stuck on any of the missions, although I will say the gem collecting in Odds and Pods has a very strict time limit for first time players. This is one of very few missions I actually failed and even though then I got it on my second try, but yeah, it is super unforgiving compared to all of the other time limit tasks in the game. Still though, as long as you don't waste time fighting the enemies and you memorize where the gems are located, you can get it done within about mm, 30 to 45 seconds remaining. Needless to say, there's not a lot of depth here, and I'm not just talking about the gameplay either. Oh boy, I tell you what, some of the character designs managed to translate into 3D okay, while others absolutely did not. The Professor, for starters, looks worse than a Playmobil figure, and don't even get me started on Miss Keen's nose job. The Mayor and the girls look pretty good given their more round and cartoony proportions, and I love how Miss Bellum's face is obscured by all of the Mayor's balloons, because that was pretty comical. And in tune with the show. This game came out a few months after the theatrical movie, and quite frankly I'm surprised that this wasn't a movie tie-in game. So that means Mojo's pointy ear design was used instead of his original one. Mojo is actually the most enjoyable part of this game. Just the way he overreacts to Picloids taking over as well as being forced to help the girls, yeah, it's a blast to just listen to him go off about his neighbor's lawnmower. The animation though, yeesh, just watch the cutscenes and you can see it for yourselves. It gets the job done I suppose, but by no means is it high end or anything like that. The characters' movements are incredibly stiff and the lip syncing is all over the place. It's such a stilted presentation, but at least I can compliment the game for keeping the same visual style as the cartoon. I mean, mock the 3D models all you want, but at least the setting and backgrounds actually look like the show. Even the vehicles driving around the city like the police car look looks exactly like it did in the cartoon. The citizens though, ugh, they look like they were ripped straight out of a nightmarish N64 game. I mean, this kid has seen some shit. Visuals are one thing, but layouts are another. And quite frankly, I can't say I'm a fan of the labyrinth styled level design that each area of this city contains. These maps are nothing but right angles galore and makes it extremely unenjoyable to explore. I mean, on one hand, this is basically Pythagoras' dream come true, but it makes navigation a total pain to deal with. For a game about superheroes who can fly, being restricted to hallways like this is extremely underutilizing for their abilities. I'm not necessarily saying I expect Spider-Man PS4 levels of open world gameplay, but Spider-Man 2 on the GameCube? Heck yeah. I can't say much for the writing, however. There are a few good lines here and there, but most of it is pretty groan worthy. The entire joke of the second level is that the mayor wants cookies and milk and Miss Bellum to baby him, and while those are certainly stapled gags of the series, it's just drawn out way too long over too many missions. Occasionally the game will get a chuckle out of me, but for the most part, it's honestly pretty meh. I've been monitoring the election, and Mojo has taken the lead! Hooray for Mojo! Excuse me, Bubbles? Well, it's nice he's doing good for once, right? No? I guess not. Bad monkey, bad! Now, as I mentioned towards the start of the video, there were two different versions of this game released a year apart from each other. The PS2 version is the game as it was originally released, and the GameCube version, under the name of Pickled Edition, mostly just featured a few changes here and there. 
You may have noticed that there are these baby mojo pictures floating around the map that I've been occasionally picking up. In the original PS2 version, these allowed you to add pictures to the scrapbook in the bedroom and is also how you unlock the ability to replay missions. In the GameCube version, these coins are absolutely useless because now you can just replay the missions as soon as you beat them, which, to be fair, is how it should be. I was confused by this at first, seeing as the GameCube version doesn't tell you what these coins do, but that's only because they don't do anything. I guess the devs just didn't bother to remove them or something. There are also six toys scattered around the world to collect in the PS2 version, which as far as I'm aware, don't do anything at all. But in the GameCube version, three of these toys were removed outright and the remaining three unlock an exclusive mini game that's only playable in this version. Other than those changes though, these games play nearly identical to one another. As for said mini games, the game has three of them, and you've probably all played them before because they're literally just reskins of Pac-Man, Space Invaders, and Frogger. One has you controlling Mojo, where you collect pellets and avoid the Powerpuff Girls like ghosts. One has you playing as the girls defending against Picloids, attacking in Space Invaders fashion. And the third has you guiding Picloids across the road back to their mothership whilst avoiding oncoming traffic. I think the first two games are serviceable at the very least if nothing else, but they're just the same classic arcade game everyone already knows with a different skin and slightly different physics. But my god, that Frogger parody really pisses me off for one reason and one reason only. In the original Frogger, you use these logs to traverse over these rivers so that you can avoid falling in and drowning, right? Well, this game translated that to trains traveling across a track and suddenly it's become remarkably contradictory. I don't mean to nitpick or anything, but when the first section literally teaches you to avoid motorized vehicles because they will hurt you if you get hit by them, logically the player would then think they want to avoid getting hit by the trains as well. Well, turns out you actually die if you touch the train tracks, despite that not making any sense at all, and while sure you pretty much figure out what to do via trial and error, it still hinders the first time experience of the game because there's no way a first time player would think, oh, so now I want to touch the vehicles even though I was supposed to avoid them before. Vehicles that don't act as platforms but then do send a conflicting message, but hey, what does it matter? You're probably just gonna die anyways. Yeah, so needless to say, Relish Rampage was not a very successful video game outing for the classic Powerpuff Girls or for Viz Entertainment. After this game, the company would then go on to produce an Evil Dead game, a remake of the 1988 game Narc, and Brave the Search for Spirit Dancer before shutting down for good. I saw potential here in Relish Rampage, but sadly it could not deliver. Truth be told, I wouldn't really recommend this game even to a Powerpuff fan because what you could get out of this game, you're already going to get out of two 11 minute episodes of the show. There's not a lot of extra detail thrown in for the fans to latch onto aside from the talking dog billboard, and that's unfortunate because one of my favorite things about licensed games is seeing all of the clever little in-jokes the developers include for fans of the show to discover. To this day, LEGO Dimensions is still the closest we've ever seen to what a real 3D Powerpuff Girls video game could be like if it had the time and effort put into it. But sadly, I don't think we're going to be getting another attempt at a game like this for a long, long time, if ever. But, oh well, it's not the end of the world. There's still plenty of other Powerpuff games out there I've yet to discover, and I'm sure there are far worse games out there that makes this one look great by comparison. And since I just finished covering a Powerpuff Girls game, I figure why not step foot into the other Cartoon Network show that was developed by the same production team. Tune in next time to see my review of Dexter's Laboratory Disaster Strikes, and unlike Relish Rampage, this is a game I actually did experience during my childhood. Until then, Shadow Streak, signing off.